Joining me now is nationally syndicated columnist and the author of If Democrats Had Any Brains, They'd Be Republicans. <laughs> Ann Coulter. Hey, welcome to the show, Ann. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. I saw you on O'Reilly last night. You were magnificent. <laughs> That's nice of you to say, but I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. And I'm not used to, <laughs> not used to satellites. You must have done a lot of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you never get used to that. Yeah, I get all confused. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, it's really fun to talk to you. Thank you. I'm a huge fan. Really? Yes. Wow. That's nice. All right, Norman. <laughs> now, uh, Sorry, I hate when guests say that, but I am. Oh, that's nice. A pretty girl like you. What do you do for guys? I've always <laughs> heard like that. I've always heard that dudes are afraid of strong women. Do you ever? Have yeah, any... well, maybe weak men are, but that's not really what I'm in the market for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and let's start with this Iowa. They're all caucusing the Iowans. Yes. So, do well, you have any thoughts on that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yes. Yes, I do. Um, well, I don't know. I, I'm sort of torn on it because on one hand, I think it should be much, much, much more difficult to vote. Way too many people vote. Um, mm -hmm. It's like having me vote on the Oscars and I never see movies um, to have most people voting. I don't understand this impulse. Oh, vote. It's your civic duty. Um, I think there ought to be a poll tax and a literacy test. But I'm not sure the Iowa caucus is the way to get at it, because you have to spend, it's not so bad for the Republicans, oddly enough, but for the Democrats, um, you have to go and attend a meeting all day. You have to sit in a meeting with, with annoying people. It's like jury duty for a day. Um, so and and have, it's the people that just last the longest right. there, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why they haven't really done a bang-up job in the past. <laughs> now, who do you like on the Republican side? Um, well, I like Duncan Hunter the most, but of course he, he doesn't particularly have a chance. I guess yeah. other, other voters don't like cranky old men who don't smile much, as much as I do. <laughs> um, but on the issues, he's magnificent. Of our top candidates, and I guess there are four or five of them, the one I dislike the least is Mitt Romney. Uh -huh. But I'm not wild about any of them. Oh, well, I like them all better than any of the Democrats. Now, what I find intriguing about you is that you're um, unapologetically pro-life. and That's what I noticed about your appearance last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I emailed everyone on my email list. That was, that was magnificent. Well, it's not a popular opinion. But I've, I've always wondered why it's not a subject of debate in the country since the country is so split but you never hear it like discussed in rational terms like no, it's you're right you're right um well i think in part it's because one side doesn't really want the details discussed uh -huh. um it's better to talk about it as a, a matter of you know women's women's freedom and women's choice than sucking the brains out of a little baby um yeah why would they not just call it pro-abortion and anti-abortion yeah, it's not a good name. You know, they, <laughs> they've, the sociologists have noticed that, that names for ethnic groups um, are, um, you know, enrolling over the centuries. When they're first called names, they're, they're epithets. And when the ethnic group, or whatever the group is, when it achieves, um, um, you know, status in society, uh, the, whatever the last ethnic group or um, name it was called is the one, nickname is the one that sticks, and then it's no longer considered a mean name. Um, and uh. it's the same thing with abortion. They keep changing the name. It's choice and women's rights and women's health care and a woman's right to choose. Um, but then people figure out what it is, and they hate whatever the new thing is. Yeah, what I've also found always a little suspect is when these ladies go like, I'm not for it, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Why aren't they for it? Right, right. Um, and we found out that they were, I mean, every once in a while, it's the corner of the app, um, eye facts that always leap out at you. Um, and, and they slip every now and then, because you're exactly right. They're always saying, well, no one is for abortion. No one is for abortion. And then, um, I don't know if you remember, when, when Sam Alito was nominated to the Supreme Court, you know, the press descended on his sweet little Italian mother and started peppering her with questions. And they ask her, you know, is your son 
um, uh, is he, you know, for or against abortion? And she said, well, of course he's against abortion. And that became a huge news item uh-huh. <laughs> that Sam Alito was against abortion. But, you know, I thought they told us everybody was against abortion. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that your litmus test? Um, oh, I have lots of litmus tests. But, yeah, that's a big one. That's so you, a really, really big one. Because I know and you're also, very serious about it. and we, I mean, do you view it as like a, a pogrom, like a, like a genocide? Like a what? Like a genocide? Like a, uh, yes. Huh? Yes, it's unbelievable what's going on. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how restrained the pro-life forces are. But, you, you know, they won't, they won't let us vote. I think we'd, I think we'd win if, I mean, obviously the, the Planned Parenthood side thinks that Americans are not copacetic with abortion because we're not allowed to vote on it. I mean, that's part of what's so enraging about this. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh-huh. Um, as long as the pre- Supreme Court says that, that abortion is a constitutional right, there's nothing you can do. You can change as many hearts and minds as, as there are in the country, and there's nothing that can be done. You know, back in the 60s, um, these, these radicals used to, if they weren't going to sign up with, like, you know, the weathermen and blow up the Pentagon, they'd say, no, I'm going to work within the system, work within the system. Well, the pro-life forces have been working within the system for 40 years now, and, you know, patiently bide their time, try to get new Supreme Court justices, and then, you know, we end up with an O'Connor um, or a Kennedy who, who hallucinate the same right to abortion in the Constitution. Um, so, you know, I understand why, why violence breaks out. I wouldn't engage in violence myself. I wouldn't, I'm, I mean, just on the basis of Pascal's wager. But, but I can understand <laughs> if you're not going to let people vote that some of them are, are going to engage in violence. There hasn't been that much violence. I mean, it's about seven abortion doctors to, what, 40 million dead babies. It's a very tiny... I, I didn't understand the Pascal's wager. I mean, I know um, what that is. But. That was the argument for God. It's very, it's very simple. No, I know that. I know Pascal's wager, but I didn't understand what you meant. Oh, but. I wouldn't shoot an abortion doctor. Oh, because. Uh, yeah. What if I'm wrong? Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that, that's that's interesting that you say. What if I'm wrong? <laughs> have you ever said that before? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I have, though not on not on most of the idiotic things liberals say. <laughs> <laughs> So you would not uh, support Giuliani then, or any other pro-choice candidate? No, I mean, if it's I've and I've been polling, um, you know, some of my friends on this. I mean, if it's, I think it would be very, I think it would be very bad for the country if both, if both the Republican and Democratic nominee um, support abortion. Um, so you know, I think that would be bad. But if they're both supporting abortion, yeah, I mean, I, I at first I was saying I'd never vote for a pro-abortion Republican, and then within about a week I realized after a hard-fought fought campaign against Hillary Clinton, I'd probably go into the voting booth, pull the, the lever for whichever idiot we've nominated, including Giuliani, and then just lie to all my friends about it. <laughs> who, what, what is your sense of who? Like to me, it seems clear that Hillary Clinton will be the next president. But do you think so? I think so too, and this and this business about how she's losing in Iowa, I am very suspicious of because, because of the sneaky little tricks of the Clinton machine. And one of the big ones they've always used is lowered expectations. Um, the prime example of which was when when Clinton was was running in the Democratic primaries. You know, he came in like third or fourth in Iowa. He came in second in New Hampshire. And that one was when he was crowned the comeback kid. He came in second. <laughs> How are you the comeback kid? Well, it's because they had spent, you know, weeks lowering expectations. And, oh, he's washed up. He's finished. He's over. And the funniest example was right before they released his, his grand jury testimony. This is the one in which he, he uh, launched the one about it depends on what the meaning of is is. And we got into a lot of discussions of you know, where his penis was in relation to Monica Lewinsky. And it was so embarrassing. I mean, the the grand jury, the the, the black grand jury in Washington, D.C., that was sympathetic to Bill Clinton, they laughed out loud as he was giving his testimony. And so before it was released to the public and played all over TV, the rumors went out, you'll probably remember this, that, that Clinton turned purple and there was spittle coming out of his mouth and he stormed out of the room. Well, okay, it wasn't that bad. It was embarrassing. <laughs> what is the definition of the word is? Do we have an OED <laughs> I thought it, it was pretty the, simple. Yeah, it is. 
It's almost a word that's so <clears throat> simple you don't even know the definition. <laughs> this is why I so wish, I don't think it will happen, but I so wish Obama would be their nominee. I think he would be tougher to beat than Hillary, and I don't care. I just want to be rid of this national pestilence of the Clintons. <laughs> <laughs> the national pestilence. pestilence. <laughs> Our long national pestilence is over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, Barack's got money. Yes. Yes. I mean, that does give you, that is a, a heartening fact about the Democrats, that even they feel a little creepy about the Clintons. It's funny, you know, Barack always ends his thing with, let's go change the world. And isn't that what uh, Bush is doing? <laughs> yeah, in a pretty transformative and important way. <laughs> Hey, Ann, you're going to stay with us for one more segment, right? Wait, what? The Dennis Miller Show. <coughs> Breakers. Fifteen seconds. Guidance internal. Thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten, nine, eight. Ignition sequence start. Engines on. Five, four, three, two, one. All engines running. Launch ahead. The Dennis Miller Show, 866-509-7268. Ann Coulter is kind enough to uh, stay with us for a second segment. Uh, Ann, I wanted to talk to you um, about Christianity because you're Christian, right? Yes, I am. And I, I like it because um, it seems to me that you're an actual Christian. And I, I know you got – Sal was telling me uh, he was against the uh, thing you did on Donnie Deutsch, but – Not according to liberals. <laughs> but the fact of the matter but is I that – I don't think they're really down with, with, with the scripture since they're often standing up at college lectures demanding to know how I could be a Christian if I smoke and wear short skirts. And I'm just <laughs> looking for those passages of the Bible. <laughs> but it's very strange like because I always hear you know, that people don't like Christians because – uh, you know, they they uh, believe it's the only true faith and they want to convert people, but that's the, the basis of Christianity, isn't it? Right, and I would assume, you know, any religion, including the godless religion of liberalism, you know, they want us all to be liberals. They want us to change our light bulbs to those to those goofy, you know, <laughs> global warming p protecting light bulbs. Um, you know, I assume... <laughs> now wants to convert us all to want to suck the brains out of little babies and so on and so forth. I mean, Wait, isn't that, that, that's now illegal, though, right? Partial birth abortion? Um, yes. It took a long time, but yes, it is. And that, what I don't understand is, like, I remember in the Scott Peterson case, he was charged with right. double homicide. So right. wouldn't that mean that the, the baby was a... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a big issue, actually. These pro-abortion groups are against those laws. Um, and by the way, Hillary Clinton denounced the Supreme Court decision uh, upholding the federal law banning partial birth abortion. Uh, did all the uh, Democrats? Um, I think, yeah, I think every single one of the candidates did. Everyone who had a comment on it, um, I'd have to look it up. I wrote about her. I'm sure I noticed it at the time. I know Hillary did. It and seems... one of the ones did who who voted in favor of the law. Really? Who would that have been? Maybe Biden. I don't know. Oh. But, um, you know, these, these Democrats want to get their votes on the record um, as having voting in favor of a ban on partial birth abortion, but then turn around and denounce the Supreme Court decision upholding the law they voted for. But surely, I don't know, I, I should have asked John Zogby, but surely... Uh... 